both of them are in the top 22 in the Europe uh, region. So where, it, like, for our top 16 in North America and stuff mm -hmm. like that, they're the best of the best. That's amazing. So we have two very quality, high-profile players here uh, playing in Latin America. Uh, looks like they're getting set up here. We have the prize cards. Uh, you know, that's that's a doable. That's doable prize cards. Yeah, so for Nico, he's actually playing Zork, Life Spot. Okay. But then we have a special treat. Mark is playing Zorark Glaceon GX. Glaceon GX. A oh. card we have not talked about at all, but it has such a powerful ability to where it just completely shuts down your opponent's GX and EX Pokemon abilities. Yeah, that Glaceon GX, uh, it's one of my favorites. I played it the other day in a League Challenge. Um, it's very solid. Uh, you play that Energy Evolution Eevee, attach that Water Energy and evolve it up, and then immediately you can shut off. If you go first, your opponent's Tapu Lele's become ineffective, uh, Zoroark Trades become ineffective, and it's only your opponent, unlike Garbodor. Yeah, and here we go. It looks like Nico on the left is going first. We have a Bridget. Bridget, of course, lets you search your deck for up to three basic Pokemon, uh, as long as they're not EX Pokemon. GXs are fine. Uh, Pokemon uh, decks that play Zerua tend to like to get multiple Zeruas out, so you can do multiple trades in a turn. So we will see exactly what basics uh, Nika will be fetching with this. And we do see two Zeruas and a Wimpod. Yeah, it, it's really going to be interesting to see how this matchup plays out, just because Glaceon really is made to counteract Zorark. That's right. And without having that ability to use Zorark, and since Glaceon is weak to metal types, uh, doesn't have to worry about being a, against a grass type. Where's your Kartana when you need it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so looks like we're over at Mark's turn now. Uh, using that Tapu Lele's Wonder Tag ability to search the deck for a supporter card. Looks like Mark is eyeing that Bridget. Looks like we're going to see both sides playing a Bridget on the first turn. I think we're going to say a lot of that this weekend. Yeah, first turn Bridget, Zerua, Zorark, GX. <laughs> There's the Bridget. And it looks like Mark was looking through the deck earlier, probably getting an idea what his prize cards are as well. But while you're in there, let's go ahead and check and see what basics we want. And again, he really only plays 3-2 uh, Glaceon. So you want to make sure that Glaceons are in the deck because the worst thing that's ever happened to me is you just like a blind energy evolution and figure out your card's prize and right. you just kind of cry to yourself inside. <laughs> but yeah, starting with those three Eevees in the deck gives you more opportunities to lead with Eevee. We do see a basic water energy attachment here onto the Eevee, allowing it to search for that Glaceon GX. The big thing here is if he has a way to retreat the active. That's right. Uh, float Stone, generally the most yeah, useful he, way to do that. He uh, only plays the one, though. Only one Float Stone. Uh, cannot play a supporter this turn. Bridget was played already, so no Guzma to bring up the Glaceon. That's the judge uh, in you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And actually, it looks like he just passes. We actually see a counter catcher in his hand as well. Oh, uh, that's interesting. The deck is kind of teched a lot for the few matchups that he thinks he's going to play. And Ultra Ball discarding the Mew EX is kind of something you don't need in this matchup anymore, especially if Glaceon's active. That's right. So we see a Golisopod coming down. Uh, we Oof. see Floatstone onto the active Zerua and then followed up with a Cynthia. Great supporter from the last set. Allows you to shuffle your hand into your deck and draw six new cards without allowing your opponent to get new cards as well. Uh, that hand is pretty good. Getting that Glycopod charged up with that Grass Energy and the Float Stone means he'll be able to take a knockout this turn with First Impression. But does he draw into some Zorark GXs to use trade? Because after this turn, I don't know how long he's going to be able to trade. That's right. Uh, we have Nico here opting for shrinking his opponent's bench. Uh, allows his Golisopod to still do the maximum damage with first impression, doing additional damage since he promoted it during his turn. Well, not maximum damage anymore. It does get reduced by 20. That's right, because he chose to limit his opponent's bench side instead of his own. All right, well, Double Colorless does come down on the Glaceon, and 
there we see the frost bullet 90 and then 30 to a bench reminiscent of Darkrai EX. That's right. Darkrai EX, very famous for spreading out that 90 and 30 to the bench, uh, allowing multiple knockouts to occur. Uh, but that freezing gaze, that is the main reason you play that Glacial on GX. It will definitely hinder the opponent's ability, especially because we see four Zeruas out there and no Zoroark GXs. <laughs> yeah, the end coming down also is kind of awkward, too, just because you took that prize early on. And, like, it's not the best. Like, okay, I'm, I'm going to draw five, but it's no Cynthia. <laughs> That's right. All right, we do see a Zorark GX coming into play. Uh, we see a second one coming into play. Uh, again, though, will not be able to trade. Uh, it looks like with the Glaceon being in the active position, that does prevent it from happening. He does have the Enhanced Hammer, though, getting rid of the Double Colorless, and this is... Kind of the problem Glaceon decks have been having a little bit is you're super reliant on that double colorless energy. And that's right. Uh, followed up with a crossing cut GX from the Golisopod, um, using up the GX attack for the day for the game, uh, doing the additional damage and retreating to the bench. Looking at the hand though, it seems pretty good, but his board's a little lacking. That double puzzle of time will be useful, but he might have to try to draw some cards with trade to try to get out of it. Correct. Just a reminder, uh, the ability of the Glaceon GX only affects the opponent and not the player, so they are still able to use their own Zorok GX trades. Um, but with that double puzzle, gives Mark the opportunity to go back in, pull back that double colorless energy, or something else that maybe he could really use. I, th I think it, I saw the Zorua. Yep, that's exactly what it was. But right. it's interesting because this Glycepod on the bench is threatening an easy knockout on this Glaceon that's active. So if you commit this double colorless to the active and just do your 90-30, next turn you're going to lose all your energy. That's right, especially because the active Zoroar GX has a float stone attached, so it could easily just retreat next turn. Uh, then there would be no energy on Mark's side of the board, and he would be in a tough situation. All right, so Ultra Ball we see here going for the Zoroark GX. One card that is pretty neat for Mark is the one of uh, Aqua Patch. But oh, here we see the Polar Spear GX with that counter catcher bringing up that damaged Glycopod. Polar Spear doing what? Okay, math guy, that's uh, <laughs> 9 times 5, that's 45, 450 damage. That's an, uh, enough damage. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> it just might be. Um, but definitely, uh, we are looking at a situation here where, you know, using that counter catcher, went behind on prizes, huge advantage. It's just an item card. You don't have to worry about using your supporter for the turn, like with Guzma. Oh, no, and... We actually saw Nico use Puzzle of Time to look at the top three, and there was a Puzzle of Time in the top. <laughs> and right now, he has no cards in hand. This Glaceon is shutting him out of the game. That's right. That's what Glaceon does. Uh, that freezing uh, aura ability stops the opponent from being able to use trade to get their hand back up, which is what Zorak GX tends to want to do. And Mark uses his own trades. Just kind of rubbing it in Nico's face, like, <laughs> look what I can do, <laughs> and you can't. All right, so now we see Mark getting ready the benched Glacian GX, attaching a water energy there, and it looks like we are going to see another 90 and 30 to the benched Zoroark GX. Yeah, and if I remember, the top three were Double Colorless, Puzzle of Time, and Guzma. So for the next three turns, he's not going to be able to do much, but he does get the knockout thanks to Zorark, which does give two prize cards. So uh, that's now suddenly we have a hand of two. Next turn we'll draw a card, and Nico will have three cards in order to try to work his way back into the game here. Oh, there we see the Field Blower getting rid of that Parallel City, something that has really been hurting Mark. Like, he's only been able to have these two Glaceon, these two Zorark. And then Mark also following up with an Ultra Ball. Looks like he's getting ready to set up some more bench Pokemon now that he has the ability to use bench space using Tapu Lele's ability to search his oh, deck. Oh, I, I think we're going to see a Mallow here. You think this will be a Mallow? 
Well, he's getting two he's cards. Getting two so. cards ready, so more than likely. Uh, still need the mallow. Still need the mallow. I think the judge is saying, uh, y y there we there go. You go. <laughs> Tapu Lele is a great card, but it's not that good. Not that good. But that's all right. Mallow, of course, lets you choose any two cards you want from your deck, put them to the side, shuffle your deck afterwards, and then put those two cards on top of your deck. Really a great ability when you have a Zorark GX to follow it up with. And he actually got the Enhanced Hammer with the Mallow as well. Just completely, ah, uh, man. Glaceon's putting in work. That's right. And then we see another 90 to the active, 30 to the bench. He's deciding where he wants to put that. Uh, Zorak GX already having 90 damage. Might want to spread it out, and he does. All right, there's the Guzma that was on top. Remember, his top card is Puzzle of Time now. Does he have a supporter or a way to shuffle his deck just to try to get something going here? And it looks like he plays the Guzma, bringing up his own Zerua, which allows him to now use his trade hey, ability. Hey, that's because something. Because the Zorak, or the Glaceon, is now on the bench and not active. Kind of reminiscent of the Trevenant, where it locked items, but only when it was active. And people played Lysander yeah. to get around that. Evo Soda getting another Zorark GX in play. So he will start to rebuild his hand here. And remember, he's at three prizes. He's slowly taking these, like, sneakily taking these prizes. That's right. And, you know, you only need six prizes to win the game. It doesn't have to be pretty. But as long as you can get the job done, that's what matters. And being able to take advantage of this turn of trading, uh, there's no guarantee he'll get it back next turn. So he needs to, uh, Nico needs to try to take advantage of this situation while able. Oh, I do see a Tapu Lele, I believe, in his hand. But remember, he already played that Guzma for the turn. That's right. So Nico is going to use the Wonder Tag ability to search for a supporter card. Um, just because next turn, uh, if that Glaceon comes back active, Tapu uh, Lele would not be able to use Wonder Tag. Yeah, unfortunately for Nico, it looks like he does not draw any form of energy. And his hand is actually just full of supporters right now. That's right. Uh, trying to decide what supporter to go for. Ops for a Guzma. Always a useful card to have in your hand. Yeah, well, Guzma is essentially a draw supporter right here because you'll Guzma the Glaceon out of the active and then just draw six cards with Zorax. All right, so despite all of that drawing, was not able to get a double colorless to attack with the Zorark GX and just passes his turn. Does Mark have a way to get the Zorark out of the active? That's the question right now. Oh, I do see a Guzma in his hand. Guzma worked for him as well, and it does look like Guzma will bring up the Wimpod. Oh. Excellent target here. Prevents any first impressions from happening. And looks like we will be seeing... We might even see a double knockout here, taking out the Wimpod and the Zorua on the bench. And that's exactly what happens. And this stops the seven prize game from happening. That's right. Mark is now down to two prize cards. Knocking out a GX will seal the victory for this game. Uh, still just game one of the match, though, so uh, still anybody's match. There we see an Ultra Ball discarding two supporters, and he has that Guzma in his hand, so he will be able to do a few trades. Oh, I like this. Getting the Tapu Coco. You can just Guzma. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> oh, Cynthia. Interesting choice. Shuffling his hand in and drawing six new cards, possibly looking for a way to get some additional cards without using trade. Uh, one good thing against Glaceon is Tapu Lele. Just energy drive is a solid attack, especially when they attack 4-3. So a double colorless is a quick 100 damage. And we do see a double colorless. Oh, and a max, max potion. potion. This has been a card that people have been adding to their Zorark decks, their Zorark Glycepod and everything like that. Uh, it, it's been coming in super clutch every time I see it played. All right, so we see Nico here. Trying to debate where to attach the double colors. Does decide to attach to the Lele, just like you mentioned, to hit for a nice, strong energy drive. All right, so let's see what Mark can do. He essentially has a way to take game on board if he has a choice band and a Guzma. And a way to retreat, of course. All right, so we do see an Ultra Ball deciding what to discard. And 
Tapu Lele using that one track ability to grab a Bridget. Bridget. <laughs> a Bridget. All right. M must not have a Guzma available or the choice band. Well, available. I, I believe the Guzma's in his hand. Okay. You can get the Bridget for trade fodder. Yeah. And, and that's, that's exactly what, what it is. Double field blower. That's definitely not what you want to see. <laughs> double colorless aqua patch. All right. Guzma double colorless, and there we go. That's using the Zorark. Oh, GX Zorark, yeah. To use the righteous beating attack. All right. So, uh, with that, Mark does take game one. Uh, we are going to give them time to set up for game number two. Yeah, and we just saw the power of Glaceon GX there. Even though Mark got three Zoroarks in play by turn two, turn three, he really only got, like, what, three trades off that game? Yeah. Four? Any opportunity that uh, Mark had to have active that amazing Ice-type Eeveelution uh, helped prevent his opponent from using those abilities, those clutch abilities. Uh, Nico found the opportunity with the Guzma to get around it and took advantage of that turn, uh, but... You're it, using it your Guzma enough. for the turn yeah. to try to set up when normally you use Guzma to get knockouts. This is definitely an interesting deck and not something we really have seen in the playing field right now uh, compared to this Zorak Glycepod deck, which is pretty much everywhere. Right. Uh, Zorak Glycepod GX, uh, very solid deck. Lots of ways to go through your deck, do really strong damage. Uh, I would not be surprised to see if he could come back on the next game. Yeah, and I think one thing that actually swung that matchup too was that counter catcher, being able to bring up that Zorark and just take the knockout with Polar Spear GX, definitely was just like, I'm here to stay. <laughs> right, counter catcher card, haven't really seen a lot of until recently, and it's starting to come up in several decks now. People, starting players at the high level are starting to realize, you know, there is a use to this card because sometimes you are behind, use that item, instead of a supporter to get yourself back in the game. Well, essentially with these Zorark decks, they're just a lot of trying to... <laughs> oh, oh. Two puzzles of time in the prizes. Max Potion in the prizes. Max Potion and... All right. The rest of it's not too bad. The Max Potion might be a clutch prize to pull later. But I was saying before, where these decks with Zorark, they're really grindy. Uh, they take a lot of just two-hit knockouts, try to set up knockouts for later, and sometimes you can just swing that matchup with that counter catcher, and being able to get it back with puzzles later is also just an added bonus. All right, so it looks like we see a Wimpod in the active position for Nico, and Mark has a Zerua, and a Zerua on the bench as well. And it looks like there might be some confusion. Looks like they're talking to the judges to try to figure out what's going on here. Uh, so we're just going to talk a little more about how we feel about that last game. Um, obviously, being in control the whole time, I really like Glaceon's attacks. Yeah, uh, just 90-30 for Frost Bullet is a, a solid, it's been a solid number ever since Darkrai. And there's been a few cards that have come out that do the same damage. And just the ability to set up knockouts in the future with that 30 snipe. And that's right. And also, look at the GX attack for the Glaceon. With having that 30 snipe allows you to put damage counters elsewhere on the board, which you don't even need to do the 90 to knock it out. You can use the GX attack, finish off a Pokemon that you've been working out on the bench, and then you really use yourself in a clutch situation to take out a fresh Pokemon. Yeah, and with Zork being so dominant... <laughs> All right, so uh, that being said, if we do get a Glaceon on top eight and it gets paired against Volcanion, where do you think that goes? Don't even talk about it. That's just hypotheticals. <laughs> all right, Volcanion's the only definite top eight. All right. All right. We still need a. We still need. Mark needs to win if he wants Glaceon on top true. eight. That's true. And his opponent, by all means, a very strong opponent, uh, looks like he's. Oh. <laughs> four oh. of his energy cards prized. He only plays seven. He only plays seven. Whoo! All right. So it looks like it looks like there's gonna be an uphill battle here. But then, if you look on Mark's prizes, he had two water prized. He only plays three. <laughs> All right. So we might have a little bit of a staring contest here. Let's see who can get to their few energies first. All right. So, real quick, Nico just leading off with an N. Just he's tired of turn one, Bridget. He <laughs> wants to give the people something new. 
So that turn one end, of course, allowing both players to shuffle their hands into their deck, uh, and they will draw as many prize cards as they have remaining, since this is literally the first turn of the game. They both have six. Uh, I am curious to see if the time is still correct. We'll, we'll get a confirmation on that. Correct. We did have oh, that. OK. OK. Uh, clock is updated, so they will have a little under 29 minutes to go. And if Nico wants to finish and win this game, he's going to need to do two very quick games. That's right. Nico, realizing that there is an EV in the active position, had that Tapu Lele in his hand off of the end and thought to himself, you know, I better wonder tag now because I might not get another opportunity. Not realizing neither player has many energies, though I did see one in Mark's hand. Really? The, the, the last water energy. <laughs> what an end. <laughs> Drawing the Bridget and having the water energy in hand? That's perfect. Yep. He's looking through his entire deck. No more water energies. No more water energies and only three double colors. Oh, no. There's all four double colors. Okay. Yeah. The two double colors are on Nico's. That's right. All right. So with the Bridget, got the Zerua, got an Eevee. What well, will be the other Pokemon? I believe it's another Zora. Probably another Zerua. Well, I think it's already down. He's just checking his deck. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> and right. there is the lone water energy. Turn one. <laughs> Glaceon GX coming out to play. And Nico cannot be happy right now. Yeah, the ideal start for the Glaceon deck is definitely to get that turn one basic water energy evolve into the Glaceon GX and then stop your opponent from setting up any other GX abilities for the game. And a, th a thing to note is the the last Glaceon GX is also in Mark's prizes as well. That's right. So Mark had a little bit of luck there off the opponent's end. Yeah. Uh, one of the worst things is drawing your evolutions after <laughs> uh, like a draw supporter and then energy evolution not seeing it. But there we see, like I said before, Tapu Lele is a very good card against Glaceon GX just because it's so energy intensive. It's not just like a Zorark where you go, all right, double colorless, I'm ready to go. It takes the three energy to actually do damage, and it doesn't do as much damage as Zorark and things like that. So Tapu Lele coming down with a double colorless and a choice ban. <laughs> Tapu Lele, we are going to see you go on the offensive here. Tapu Coco has, of course, free retreat, so it makes it very easy for Tapu Lele to switch into the active position, and to use an energy drive. 90 damage coming down, thanks to that choice band. But double Zorark coming down for <laughs> Mark. <laughs> yeah, Mark's definitely has a pretty good uh, board position right here. However, that Parallel City is putting in work right now. A Parallel City, combined with the fact that we know that one Glaceon is prized, so that other Eevee might be in for a rough time. Yeah, he had the Tapu Koko and the Zoro in his hand as well, where, okay, yeah, I'd play these down, and then and I don't want to shuffle those back. I want those in play. But Parallel City being such, probably, I think it's tied with Brooklet Hill for the best stadium that we have in standard right now. Yes, but they're for different reasons as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brooklet Hill, that's a very useful uh, effect for your own side to get powered up, whereas you use Parallel City for almost an offensive stadium. Use it to either limit your opponent's bench or to make their Pokemon do fewer damage. Hey, it could be defensive, too. You can discard <laughs> some heavily damaged Pokemon on the bench. That's true, and that has happened several times. All right, he does have that double colorless in hand, but remember, if he attaches it, that Glaceon's going down. That's right. He will not be able to knock out the Tapu Lele, and Tapu Lele will be able to turn around and use Energy Drive to knock back out the Glaceon. So Mark has a decision to make here. Do you attach to the Glaceon and attack with that? Or are you going to attack with one of the bench Zorark GXs? Wow, double colorless on the Eevee on the bench. And just the pass. So Nico would need to commit another energy to the Tapu Lele to take the knockout here. But he has to be sitting pretty. Yeah. Uh, he probably has a game plan in his mind. Maybe he has a uh, some sort of recovery to bring back the Glaceon from the discard pile. Uh, looks like I did see a puzzle of time in his hand. He might have two puzzles, so he might be ready to bring back up the Glaceon after it gets knocked out. 
Nico is eyeing that Mallow supporter in his hand, being able to rearrange his draws. But right now, it's not pretty good. Yeah, trade, of course, being blocked by Glaceon's Freezing Gaze. Freezing Gaze uh, prevents the Pokemon from uh, using uh, Zorak GX's trade ability. So it's still nice to put those two cards on top because you know what you're going to draw next turn, but you can't draw them right now. All right, he has chosen his cards, but remember, look, just like you said, can't can't draw them. So he has to work with what he has in his hand, but he does have an energy in his hand. And if my math is right, I believe that's a knockout. That's right, energy drive doing one, two, three, four. 80 damage plus 30 equals 110. 110 plus We got there. We got there. Out. And let's see if he actually got some of his energy. He got a double colorless, but still those two grass and the double colorless in there. We might not be seeing a Golisopod this game. That is an important field blower, getting rid of that choice band that's putting in a lot of work. That's right. And Mark now has the freedom to bench Pokemon. Yeah. Speaking of that Tapu Lele coming down in his hand, Wonder Tag searching his deck for supporter. But with that Glaceon prize, he's really trying to find another puzzle of time. He still has the uh, able to use his Zorark GX's trade to try to draw additional cards. Hopefully oh. being able to draw into that puzzle. We could see the Mallow here, but Okay, he does have the Malice, so he'll be able to get that puzzle of time and get the water energy back as well. Because remember, that's his only water energy he has. That's also his last Glaceon because the other one is prized. So he's looking through, double checking both of those cards. Both are prized. So he's like, well, what, what, what other card do I want? Oh, the counter catcher here counter -catcher might be pretty good. Excellent choice. Just Marcus is just double checking, I think. Make sure not missing anything else. All right. And with both trades from Zark available, he'll be able to replenish his hand and get those cards he needs. Oh my, what a surprise. He drew a counter catcher and a puzzle of time. So <laughs> lucky. <laughs> All right, he went ahead for another trade. Might as well because you have it available before you unleash your combo. See, all these guys playing in Mallow nowadays, you just need to be a cool kid and trade in a double puzzle without it. <laughs> then we do see the double puzzle playing two at the same time. Allows you to search your discard pile for any two cards and put them into your hand. Getting <laughs> both the water energy and I believe the Glaceon. Yeah, using the energy evolution here, just making sure like, yeah, it's prized. All right. Okay, now we'll evolve in the Glaceon I just got. Right. <laughs> and there it is. But again, not attacking the turn before. There's no damage on the Tapu Lele, so he won't be able to take a knockout. But this play I like a lot. Frost Bullet 90, and then he can put 30 on the Tapu Lele, setting it up for a Polar Spear GX for a knockout next turn. That's right. And plus, with having the Zoroark GX in the active position, uh, Nico was lucky that he got that double colors from the prizes, but you know Mark had no way of knowing that he would not be able to attack. And we see the Evo Soda allowing Mar Nico to search his deck for any evolution card. Uh, only evolution card that he could play at this time would be that Glycopod GX. And Glycopod, a card that kind of broke out last year at Worlds. Uh, a lot of the Japanese players popularized it and ended up getting second to Diego. And ever since then, it's like, wow, I can attack for one energy for a lot of damage and then play cards that just, like, pick it back up or heal it. This card's pretty good. Definitely. And it looks like we see, saw an Acerola played by Nico, removing all that damage off of the Zoroark GX, putting it back in his hand, and Energy Drive. All right, so this is the turn Mark kind of needed. The Zorak's not in play anymore, and he has access to N in his hand as well, so he can try to N it away and really just try to shut him off, because remember, that double colorless is in his hand too. That's right. Removing the ability to use that double colorless, uh, putting the Zorak GX back in the deck. Uh, Nico only drawing four prize cards, or four cards off of N because of only having four prize cards. 
would have to have a little bit of luck in order to get both those cards back in, especially uh, since Glaceon will shut off the ability if he even gets a Zorark, will not be able to use trade. Yeah, and with the grass energy on the Tapu Lele and then the two grass prized, he's not going to be able to attack with Glyspot anytime nope. soon. So four cards drawn there. He did get Azorok GX, but he did not get the double colorless energy. Oh, and there's the Tapu Lele, which would normally be very good, but with Glaceon out, the only usable supporter he has in his hand is Bridget. That's right. Freezing Gaze really putting its work in this game. Um, and it looks like we will be seeing that Polar Spare GX this turn. Does 50 damage times the number of damage counters on defending. Uh, Tapu Lele GX having 30 damage right now. Three damage counters. Three times 50 is 150. Knockout. It's not quite as much as last time, but I'll give him a pass. Still gets the job done. All right, so Nico on his turn looks like going to play the Bridget. Uh, probably the only supporter in hand. Might as well play it and get some more Pokemon ready to go. Well, thinning your deck out three cards is something you really need, especially when you don't have anything in your hand. Right. And if later on uh, Nico's able to get a Guzma, we have three Zerua in play now, so multiple Zoroks could come out into play. Staring at the board state, it kind of looks unfair on Mark's side of the field. <laughs> like, I got these three Zorark, I got this Glaceon, and you got, like, one Zorark and a Glycepod that can't even attack. All right. And, and there's like the pass the of the turn. Yep. Tapu Koko having 110 hit points will be able to survive an attack from Glaceon GX. So gives him a free turn to think about it, but then he will have enough damage to be knocked out from the bench. We could even see an Acerola play here from Mark to try to save this Glaceon from a surprise attack. And we do. Glaceon GX coming back to the hand along with that very important water energy and that very important Glaceon GX coming back into play onto the new EV with no damage on it. Another EV being placed back on the bench. And Mark is looking to have a pretty dominant board position right now. With just one Glaceon in his deck. And he traded into a puzzle of time. That's always good for later on. Especially because I think he has another puzzle in his hand. And decides to put the 30 on the Zorua. Again, this will set up some two hit, like two prize turns. But with this Evo Soda, not really. Mm -hmm. He still has that Tapu Koko. Now, if Nico is unable to draw an energy, he might leave the Tapu Koko in the active position, forcing Mark to use Frost Bullet to do a whopping 90 damage to the active, which would not be more than enough damage to knock it out. But that way, he only does 30 to the bench instead of being able to do enough damage for 90 to a higher hit point Pokemon or knocking out Pokemon and 30 to one of the benched Coco, the bench Coco for another knockout. It does look like Mark has the Guzma, oh. though. And this will be another two prize swing, taking a knockout on Zorua and the Tapu Koko. And hopefully for him, he gets the other Glaceon, so he's a little bit safer. Like, he doesn't have to play around all these cards. That's right. Ace Rolla coming but in very no. important. The Glaceon is still up on top of those prizes. Mark it, has to be very conservative with the Glaceon. It just, want, it just wants to hide. <laughs> it's like, ah, I'm, I'm tired, all right? I've been through six rounds. Just let me be. <laughs> All right, so Nico playing the end, hoping to disrupt Mark's board a little bit here. Um, while Nico's trying to search for that double colorless, that very important double colorless energy, which would allow Nico to attack with one of his Pokemon. And right now he just has two. Like That's all the energy in his deck is two double colorless. He does have access to some puzzle of times and stuff, but drawing four cards, it doesn't really seem likely. And we do not see the double colorless. We do see a counter catcher, which now is live. Counter catcher, very useful. There are two Zorark GXs sitting on Mark's bench with no float stone, so they would not be able to retreat that turn. And also gives him the ability to use his trade now. Uh, this would be perfect if Nico had a double colorless to try to take a knockout on this Eevee, but 
He does have trade, like you said. Can he draw it? <laughs> Nico playing the Ultra Ball, discarding two cards to get a Pokemon that he does not want to use this game to help thin his deck, using trade on that Mew EX to help increase the odds of drawing into that double colorless energy. And no. And there's the pass. And the trades begin. <laughs> this is why they call it the Pokemon trading card game. <laughs> they, they saw it all the way through to printing Zorak GX and like, all right, this pun is going to be worth it. 21 years in the making, and it finally came to fruition. All right, so bringing the Zerua back up with the Guzma. Glaceon GX into the active position. It looks like Mark will be down to one prize after this attack. All right, does he take the Glaceon from the prizes? He and does. does. So I, I, I think on the bench, powered up, ready to evolve. I think that would. I think that seals the game. Uh, it was already looking pretty bad for Nico here, but Mark having the access to a second Glaceon possibly without the use of Puzzle of Time is, is just super strong here. Yeah, Mark definitely has the dominant board position. Nico is going to try. You know, there's no reason not to try to pull something out here. See if there's maybe some some way, somehow, to come back into this game. All right, so Mark obviously only drawing one card off of the end. Nico getting four. Has that parallel city. So Mark has a decision to make here. Ops to discard the Eevee with all the energies attached to it. Who needs it? It <laughs> came too late. Don't really care at this point anymore. I think Mark's wants, Mark wants to optimize the ability to trade. Leaving all three of the Zoroks on the bench gives that opportunity as well. And again, just going through his deck so fast every turn. That's what Zorok really allows you to do. But unfortunately, you can't play the Tapu Lele. Can't play the Tapu Lele because of the stadium. Let's see if the judges catch that. Uh, all right. Well, it looks like that was not discovered right away. Uh, to be fair, it was looking. Yeah, it doesn't look like there was favor. any chance that the opponent would have come back from it. But uh, it's the, possible. The we can't hear what the audio audio was. It's possible that. Maybe he said, you know what, don't worry about it. You got the win. I see you have the Lele. So even if I knock something out, uh, it's going to be hard for me to come back because you'll be able to get that Kuzma later. So uh, looks like uh, Mark is our winner today. Uh, and wow. Seven is in.